Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and today we are going to be going to infinity and beyond with the Infinity Gauntlet expansion for Marvel United Season 1. As always, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, give some love to the subscribe button, leave comments, all that fun stuff. And if you're a fantasy fan, don't forget to check out my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards. I wrote them. See, my name is on them, so that means that I put all the words inside. And you can find these on Amazon.com or dot .whatever, wherever in the world you live. You can find them on your version of Amazon in paperback, ebook, and hardcover. Get the fantasy fan in your life, the gift that keeps on giving, because these are some big chunky boys, and there's a lot to love in here. So it's time for another deep dive. As usual, we're going to look at an expansion from Marvel United, talk about everything that comes inside, everything that doesn't come inside, and then give you the rundown on whether or not it's worth your hard-earned money to pick up. So we have made it to Infinity Gauntlet, one of the most unique expansions put out in Marvel United, and you'll see why once we crack it open and take a gander at what's inside, and why waste any time? Let's do that right now. And here we are with the Infinity Gauntlet, the first season's uh, final boss box, if you will. That's what I like to call them, because Thanos is certainly final boss material. So was Apocalypse, so was Galactus. It's still weird to me that DC Superheroes United doesn't have a final boss box, but hey, they're doing their own thing, that's okay. So let's take a peek at the Infinity Gauntlet. We're going to start, as usual, by flipping it over and getting a look at what's on the back. Now, I don't think they have this blurb on the inside like they normally do, so let's quickly read the blurb here. Also, blurb is a very funny word. From the darkest reaches of the galaxy, Thanos has begun his crusade to bring balance to the universe by eliminating half of all life. He has learned of the Infinity Stones, six gemstones that predate the universe, each controlling an aspect of existence. Whoever can gather them will possess unlimited control over the universe. Thanos has sent the Black Order out across the stars to gather the stones while he forges the Infinity Gauntlet, a weapon strong enough to harness their power. Every hero stands opposed to this most vile of master plans. They must prevent Thanos from gaining the stones, then take the fight to the Mad Titan himself. I wonder if there's a happy Titan, or if it's just him and he's just upset all the time. But that's what you get back there. All right, now we're going to open her up and take a look at what makes the Infinity Gauntlet tick. Because this is a big one. This is one of the two seriously big heavyweight expansions that Season 1 had. And if you're looking for this on the aftermarket, it's probably going to set you back a lot. So you probably want to know if it's worth your time and energy and cold hard cash. Or soft warm cash. I'm not going to judge the state of your cash. So we got our little leaflet in there and we have our rule book. Now the rules for Infinity Gauntlet are a bit more involved so it doesn't get like a little pamphlet as the other ones do. It gets a full on rule book and it tells you everything that comes inside and it gives you the rules for how to play your Infinity Battles and then how to take the fight to Mr. Thanos himself and what all these power up cards do. Much more involved sort of game within the game. And this is the first instance of Simon doing that, is introducing a game within the Marvel United game system that kind of just ups the ante and makes everything really different. So we'll take a closer peek at what comes in the box now. Let's start with these locations, because there's a bunch of them in here. This is a thick stack of locations, and you'll notice some of them are gold. Those are the Thanos locations. And they're colored especially like that because... You can only use these locations when you fight Thanos. These gray ones you can use anytime, mix and match. And I've always been curious, for people who have the cardboard locations, do you kind of shuffle those like a giant deck of cards and then just randomly pick? Because that sounds like a lot of fun. Because I don't have those, I just kind of keep everything in its place. I do my location picking a little bit differently, but I want to know if that's how people pick locations, because that sounds really, really neat. Here's Asgard. Uh, that's the first of our locations. Beautiful. All right, and then there's Nedavalier, or Nita. I'm not, I think it's Nita Valir. I don't. Know, I'm not a Norse god. I can't pronounce all of those names. I'm sorry. Hala, Hala back. New York. I was there once. Not there, but you know, in the streets below. I wasn't floating up above. Uh, the Sanctum Sanctorum, which unfortunately is not in the real New York. 
Trust me, I tried to look for it. Uh, Vormir, that's the bad place where people jump off the cliff and die, and it has a great end of turn effect where you can literally do that um, to clear a threat card. And then we get into the gold-colored Thanos locations. So he has another version of Avengers Mansion. There's Titan. There's the Sanctuary. The Wakanda Fields. Thanos' Palace. And a Quantum Tunnel. All right. So that's a lot of locations. You can already tell, just opening this up, it's a very special box. And you can see some more specialness underneath, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Then here are the villain dashboards, as well as the, um, I forget what this piece is called, the mission uh, dashboard or whatever. And it's got the regular side, and then it's got the special gold Thanos side, if you're fighting against uh, Thanos himself. Uh, you use this side for when you're doing the infinity battles, because it has a special different thing. Um, and then you have your three, sorry, four villain dashboards. You've got Proxima Midnight, Ebony Maw, Black Dwarf, and Mr. Thanos himself. And I could be wrong, but I believe, see right here with a four-player game, he has 14 health. I think that might be the most health any villain in Marvel United can start with. Uh, some of them can certainly go higher than that. Sandman, for example, can get way higher than 14, but as far as starting health, I think he's the most powerful, as it should be, right? That makes sense. And this right here, just, you know, these four dashboards, this is one of the biggest draws for me with this box is the idea of you have this little mini game of the Infinity Gauntlet, but you still have the normal Marvel United villains, and the box comes with four of them, as opposed to just making him the only villain and making these guys sort of like weird micro villains kind of like they did with the horsemen of apocalypse um i love this concept even though these guys are not a tier super popular villains you know no little kid is walking around like oh man i can't wait to fight black dwarf but it's uh it's the thought that counts they gave us not one not two but four villains in this box to contend with uh so it makes it easier to mix and match with all of marvel united and i love that about it so that's part of what makes this box great for me. Uh, they do, oh, they do this weird thing where you have to actually grip it from the top and bottom to open. And no other box is like that. I don't know why they did that like that. But here we are with the interior. And as you can see, it comes with, I believe they call it a vacuum form. I believe that's what, the, it's just like a super thin plastic, uh, but an infinity gauntlet. It's almost translucent at the back. Oh no. I lied, it's not almost translucent, it's just very shiny. But it is very, very um, brittle. It's it's easy to snap and crumble apart, so you, you want to treat it gently. It's not a heavy-duty piece of equipment. But once again, it's the thought that counts. This is a great addition to this box, um, and I'll explain how this works in a little bit. You've also got all of these Infinity Stones straight out of the comics and the movies. And then we have the cards down here, so we'll take a look at those cards next, and they're in this interesting sort of uh, plastic inset within the inset. It's such a unique box. But here are your cards. There's the cards for Black Dwarf and Proxima Midnight, right? Just standard villain decks, because these guys are very standard villains. There's nothing too fancy about them, thankfully, because you have to usually fight them as a gauntlet, no pun intended. So it's nice that they're not super difficult and under here are the final decks for Ebony Ma. There's Ebony Ma's villain deck right there. And then you get into the more interesting cards. There is one card for each of the Infinity Stones right there, right? Super cool. You have these power-up cards, which help with the Infinity Gauntlet game. And then you have Thanos' villain deck, his master plan cards, his threat cards. And he is super powerful because he's Thanos. So he's uh, he's going to give you a hard time. I have beaten him. He's not impossible. Uh, but it ain't easy. So the way Infinity Gauntlet mode works is you have to face these three uh, children of Thanos villains as a gauntlet. You know, one after the other. And interspersed throughout their master plan deck, you are going to put some of these 
Infinity Stone cards, right? They just have Thanos on the back, and you would just... Uh, the game tells you exactly how to do it, but you would slip them into the Master Plan deck. So you'd be playing, you'd be playing, you'd be fighting Ebony Ma. Whoop, yeah. And then at some point it would come to his turn, and then you have this card instead on the top of the deck, and you would flip it over. Oh, and it's the Power Stone. And once that's flipped over, that means Thanos has acquired the Power Stone. So you would take the Power Stone and you would place it into the Infinity Gauntlet. Just like in the regular story, he's trying to collect all the stones. And there's going to be three stones in every deck, and you're facing against three villain decks before you take the fight to Thanos. So Thanos has the opportunity to steal all of the stones, or rather, acquire all of the stones, before you beat everybody. And if that happens, if there's ever a point where he's got all six Infinity Stones sitting in this gauntlet, then game's over, he's going to snap his fingers and kill everybody, or at least half of everybody. So maybe you'll get lucky. But regardless, that's bad. You don't want that to happen, as pretty as that might look. And yes, it does kind of fit over a human hand, depending on how big or small your hands are. I have small hands, but I think I can manage it. What do you think? Do I look like Thanos? Is it like looking in a mirror? But that's how that works. But then if you manage to beat all three of his uh, children and stop him from collecting all of those, even if he has only one left, then you can take the fight to him. He'll be powerful. The more stones he has, the stronger he's going to be. But it's still possible to beat him. Just not very probable. All right. So now we will take a look at our miniatures here. And I think we will start with Ebony Ma, who's probably my favorite member of the Black Order. Uh, but, you know, it's just a nice little piece, a nice little miniature. He's making the rocks move. Anybody who saw The Last Jedi knows that telekinesis is always about lifting rocks. So he's a, he's a very nasty villain, very nasty little bad guy. Uh, his threat cards are really annoying. And then we will grab... Black Dwarf next. Can I get him out of there is the question. There we go. There's Black Dwarf with his giant axe. He looks magnificent. Uh, he has an alternate name sometimes. I think in the movies they don't call him Black Dwarf. They call him... Um, oh boy. What do they call him? It's, it's something else. It's definitely not Black Dwarf. But uh, a rose by any other name. That's him there. He's huge. He's hulking. He's monstrous. Uh, he's not as difficult as he looks, though. These are all very straightforward villains, except for our next mini, which is the big, big, bad purple monster here himself, Mr. Thanos. Uh, I will say, this miniature is... Uh, it would look so good painted because of the, um, you know, the whole Infinity Gauntlet and the jewels within, right? So he would look excellent if he was painted up. I'm just not a painter. But if you were a painter, absolutely. Go nuts. You know, have fun with the Thanos of it all. Have fun with the Infinity Gauntlets. He looks awesome. I can't wait to put him and Darkseid next to each other. And my favorite mini in this box is definitely Proxima Midnight because I love her giant headpiece and I love her long spear. And she's a really fun villain to beat because her whole thing is she's just trying to slaughter humans because she hates humans. Very, very fun villain. And a great mini. So that's what's in this box. Now we got to put everything back as usual. And when we do that, I put back all the things that do not come in the box that I keep in here anyway. And in this case, it's something very small and simple. It's literally just one more villain deck. Boom. Corvus Glaive. Okay. He has his own deck, but he came in the promo box, the, the stretch goal box. And I just figured, <laughs> why why keep him separate from his friends? I'm putting him in here. Um, he's going to go just right on top of there. By the way, I remembered what Black Dwarf's other name was. It's Cull Obsidian. Uh, that's what they call him, I think, in the Infinity War movie. But uh, you can call him Black Dwarf if you want. You just don't call him anything mean because he's got a big axe <laughs> anyway here's Corvus Glaive's cards and I'm just going to put those right there like so and then we'll put the vacuum form gauntlet right back on top and we'll slide this on top I like keeping the gold ones up just because they look nicer 
and more unique. And then I will take Corvus Glaive's dashboard as well and just kind of add it to the rest of them here and slide it there and it all fits perfectly. Nothing, no overflow to worry about. And that is the Infinity Gauntlet. All right, it's time to do math. We're gonna tally up the points and see how many points of worthiness Infinity Gauntlet is worth. If you don't know how our points system works, be sure to check out the very first deep dive where I lay it all out for you. Inside the Infinity Gauntlet expansion, you will get four minis, which gives us a cool four points off the bat. You also get four villains, Proxima Midnight, Black Dwarf, Ebony Maw, and Thanos. Four villains equals eight more points. A ginormous 12 locations in the box. Those are worth altogether six points. And then you get the brand spanking new game mode, Infinity Gauntlet, which technically, you know, you could count that as another villain, but that just works out to the same amount of points anyway, because I give a new game mode that big two points, same as I would to a villain. And last but not least, you have the gauntlet and the gems themselves, which are completely unique. There's nothing else like that in Marvel United. And it's just a nice little touch. They didn't have to do it, but they did. And just for that little touch, I'm going to give them a little touch of love and say that that gauntlet and gems gives it an extra point. Which means all of this comes out to a grand total of 21 sexy, sexy points. Now, throughout the course of this deep dive series, periodically we're going to stop and take a look at everything uh, and just sort of see how it all stacks up with each other points-wise. But I just want to give everybody a refresher because it's been a few videos. So just so everyone's on the same page and we all know what the standings are, here's what we've gotten so far. First of all, our core box was worth a nice, healthy 30 points because core boxes are always worth more. The Black Panther and Tales of Asgard expansions both clocked in at 13 points. The Enter the Spider-Verse and Guardians of the Galaxy Remix expansions both clocked in at 15 points, which ain't too shabby, which means Infinity Gauntlet beats the other expansions out by a pretty hefty margin. All right, that's how it stands. Now, obviously, that's going to change a bunch, and at the end of everything, we are going to rank them all in worthiness, but a little taste of what's to come. For now, though, that'll do it. That's been another Marvel United Deep Dive here on Digital Charcuterie. Next time, it's the final expansion for Season 1, and things are going to get real six. I mean, sinister. Uh, that would have been so much cooler if I'd said real sinister. Anyways, see you here next time as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. Ciao for now.